Okay, hello everybody, we're back. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to be continuing with our drawing things section. Uh, it's been a while since we did a, uh, the last video or the last lesson. And so today, we're going to be continuing uh, with drawing stuff. Now, if you remember correctly, last time we did drawing, we did drawing lines. And so uh, that stuff is up and we drew some lines. Um, but more importantly, what I wanted to focus on was we're going to kind of do this same type of uh, object-oriented application where we're going to have to overload the or override the draw method to end up uh, doing something. Now in this case, let's go back to the FLTK programming manual and let's go to drawing things in FLTK under the main section here. So under drawing things. And once again, I'm going to kind of review the requirement that when you draw these types of uh, fundamental structures you have to do them in the your own version of the draw method so you can't do them outside of an overridden draw method now um, what are we going to focus on today because there's many things to draw we did lines last time so today what I wanted to kind of take a look at is drawing fast shapes so if we go to drawing fast shapes the one I wanted to kind of focus on today is drawing a rectangle so this one now this one does draw a rectangle but this one is the one I wanna deal with today and if you notice the difference is this one has a color so let's click on this one and it says FL rect F so you draw a rectangle starting at top left corner position x comma y with width and height and then you fill that rectangle with a color defined by FL color which is the last argument so what I'd like for I'm gonna give you kind of like a little mini assignment today and that is looking at this code from last time where we were able to draw lines this time essentially the code is going to be the same so you could end up just copying the code but we're not going to be drawing lines this time instead we're going to be drawing rectangles or in our specific case today squares so what exactly am I looking for here well in order to show you this I'm gonna have to kind of go into a uh, drawing program here and what I'd like is to have a window created that is a square in other words the height and the width are equal and in this case, I want the width to be 200, and I want the height to be 200. But what I want is I want, I don't know if I did this perfectly symmetrical, but I want to have four rectangles drawn inside the window. Now, I don't want this to be done, I don't want this to be done um, individually. I know four isn't that much, but we're going to increase that later, so we could have many more. Uh, but I want you to do this in a loop, okay? So think about the coordinate systems here for a moment. This will help you out a lot right here that's going to be 0 comma 0 okay and also I haven't told you the colors yet so 
I, I would like this one to be white, and I would like this one to be black, and I want this one to be black, and I want this one to be white. Now, perhaps uh, I would suggest that doing a two by two kind of takes away from the ability to do this in a loop. So perhaps, perhaps we should do this. Um, well, that's okay. We'll leave it two by two. But just to let you know, we're going to increase the the two by. When I say two by two, I mean like two squares this way and two squares that way. We're going to increase that. But let's just take a look at the numbers again. Okay. So x here is 100, right? And the y is 0. And then the, the next one would be uh, 0x, 100 for the y. And then this one would be right here at this location would be 100, 100. So what I'd like you to try and do is I'd like you to try to create these four squares in a loop, specifically in the draw method of uh, an overridden a draw method for uh, a, a subclass of FL window. So really, once again, you don't have to recreate the wheel. We already did this last time for lines. So just try and figure out how you're going to modify this code to end up with what you're looking for. So pause the video now and give it a shot. Okay, so uh, before I show you the solution, um, I just wanted to show you what it looks like in the colors that I used. So here is what I was kind of hoping it would look like. And um, this color is FL white. And this color is actually not black. Uh, I actually used FL dark three, I think. And so um, it's just, it's, it's like a dark gray. Okay, so let me give you some more hints in terms of how to accomplish this. Um, when I look at this drawing here that I have the white, black, black, white, uh, the first thing that kind of goes through my head is there's two states. So in terms of actually getting the colors, um, I would say that I'm going to be making the colors into a list where I'm going to have um, FL white and FL black. in a list and then I'll be able to set the color by simply going either C0 which is going to be white and by the way I didn't actually end up using FL black I think I used FL uh, uh, dark 3 but that's not important uh, and then of course C1 being black so if you kind of think about that in this situation, then essentially what we have is, a, is kind of like a two-state system. So you can almost think of it mathematically as even or odd. And that really helped me because zero is even and you can think of one as being odd. And so if you think mathematically, then the way you discern whether something is even or odd, if you remember from our previous course, is simply to do that. So now you say to yourself, hmm, 
what values could I get in this region that would produce an even number and what values in this region could I get to get? Now think about the values in the region. We're, we're not dealing with the with the stuff with the with the locations inside here we're only actually dealing with four points one two three four once we define those four points then we can then that's the remember how to create the uh, the rect was x y width height and then the color that was the, the constructor for the, the, the draw for the FL uh, rect. Remember here? There it is, FL rect F, X, Y, width, height, and the color. So essentially, um, the width and the height are always going to be the same. These are both going to be 100, 100, right? And the color is going to be either this or this. Now, the reason, like I said, the reason why I'm not hard coding this is because I want to be able to increase these later on. In other words, I want to make it, let's say, into a four by four rectangles or more. And so therefore, really, the only thing that's changing here, well, the color is changing, but the x and the y the values are here. There they are. Okay? So I want you to think mathematically how can you utilize these x's and y's to end up getting a, a, a like a 0 and a 1. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for 0 and 1. So essentially what I'm saying is 0, 0 has to map to 0, OK? So 0, 0 being at this point. Therefore, 100, 0, 100, 0 has to map to 1. Because once we get the 0 and the 1, you can just set, specify the color by going like that. And you'll get the correct color. And then obviously, um, the next one would be 0, 100. That also has to map to 1, right? Because this is black and this is black. That is, that's black and that's black. But then the last one, right, is 100, 100. And this one has to map to 0. So essentially, this is the mathematical function that you're looking to create. Okay, so I'll I'll pause it there and give you time to figure it out if you got stuck. Okay, well let's take this one step further, and um, so perhaps one kind of simplification that I might be able to help with is what if I simply took these numbers here, the 0, 0, and added them. So I'd go 0 goes to 0, and then added these two numbers, and then said, OK, 100 goes to 1, and then added these two numbers, and then you say 100 goes to 1, and then added these two numbers, and said 200 goes to 0. Now, does that look a little bit easier? So, in fact, you could even take it one more step of simplification, right? And you could say, well, why don't we, since these numbers are here, why don't we simply go 0 goes to 0, and then let's say 1 goes to 1, 1 goes to 1, and then this one would be 2 goes to 0. Now how would you do it? 
essentially all I've done is I've gotten rid of the hundreds, right? This was 100 where the sum, right? And so now, can you figure out how to change this into that? It's pretty easy, right? If you think about it. Okay, so for some of you that were able to figure it out, uh, you can now see that the answer is staring you in the face. And it's right, whoa, <laughs> there it is. I ended up accidentally zooming into it. It's mod 2. So there it is. It was mod 2. So if you go 0, there it is, right there, right? 0 mod 2 is 0, 1 mod 2 is 1, 1 mod 2 is 1, and 2 mod 2 is 0. So now essentially, you have the well, a mathematical way of getting to the index of what you want. So try to put all that math together and see if you can come up with the formula to do it. Now listen, there is an easier way to do this, uh, and there's always more than one way to do this, uh, and I'll actually talk about that in a second as well. Okay, here's one question how uh, we went, I, I kind of got everything on one screen here. Here's a question. How did we go from here to here, from there to there? We, we added the x and the y, right? Remember, this was the x and the y. And to get to this location here, we simply added them. And, there, and then, how do we go from here to there? How do, we turn, how do we turn 200 into 2? How do we turn 100 into 1? And 0 into 0? Any ideas? A simple way to do that is to floor division with 100. So if you go 100 floor division 100, that's going to give you 1. 200 floor division 100, that's going to give you 2. And so really, and then this part's simple too, right? Going from here to there is just... And so essentially now we just have to combine everything together. Okay, so let's take a look at the code then. Well, um, here it is. So what I did here, there's the, the line that is the mathematical conversion. I added the 2, right? So if you take a look, I added the 2. There it is. And then I floor division with 100, right? That gets me to here. And then I um, mod by 2. And so that's going to give me a 0 or a 1. And here is my color, right? On line 14, there's my color. And um, essentially, though, I mean, I think FL white in, you know, those are just enumerations. I think they correspond to 7 and 0. Um, we could try it. So if I uh, comment this out here and I uncomment this, let's see if it's going to work the same. Yeah, and it does. Uh, but in this case, it, I'm using uh, 0 is actually black and FL dark 3 is not black. So uh, if I go back and I undo my changes, in this situation, it, I end up getting the dark gray. I actually prefer the dark gray anyways, but that's okay. In any case, um, that was the solution. Now, the other thing which I wanted to show you about the cool part about this is, now the way that I've written my code here, um, if you'll notice that I have my app being a subclass of FL window, and the height and the height, I've said here, 
and I've, I've passed that to the init function here. Um, but I also have this square size value where I'm saying square size is self.width divided by 2. And notice here in the for loops, where I have my double for loop, right? I have 0 to self.width and 0 to self.height. But notice that I'm, I'm jumping, I'm stepping in the for loop with self.square size. So essentially, right, this is giving me, if I go back to my drawing, it's giving me uh, 0, 0, you know, 100, 0, and um, uh, 0, 100, and 100, 100. It's giving me those, those values in the, in the double loop, right? Because this is, the x is going to be 0 at first. And then what's square size? Well, that's the width, which is 200 mod 2. Sorry, not mod. Uh, floor division 2. So essentially, um, this is, let's just put a comment here, and I'll say that's 100. So, so self.square size is 100. So therefore, if the width of this thing is 200, then this is just going to go 0, 100. And this one's going to also go 0, 100. OK? And here, for drawing the rect, I do self.square size again. But now you see what I can do. Watch what I can do to this. If I change the height to 400, right? And now, um, that's, that's all I do. I just change the height to 400. Oh, and the other thing I have to do, obviously, is now I don't want to divide that 400 by 2. I mean, if I, if I just leave it like this and I run it, look what's going to happen. Oh, OK, that didn't work out. OK, so the reason it doesn't work is because here I have, I've hard-coded 100. And what I need to do is I need to replace that with uh, self dot square size. And so, because that is, well, self dot square size is 100. And so if I run that now, I, it works properly. But my objective here is not to actually have this in this manner. I want there to be more squares. So how could I fix that? So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to, instead of dividing the width by 2, I'm simply going to say, listen, I want whatever size I make my window, I always want my squares to be 100. So I'm simply going to say, I'm going to hard code self.square size into 100. Now, if I run it, I end up getting a 4 by 4 square. And the cool thing about that now is now if I all I have to do to make this thing bigger is I can just simply, you know, make it 500 say for example and then run it again and now I've got a 5 by 5. And if I want to run it again, I can just simply, you know, make this a 600 and then run it again. Oops. OK, sorry, I was having some Vim conniptions there. Um, yeah, so we're back to, we've got it at 600 now. And if I run it, yay. OK, great. That's 6. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. And it looks perfect. So now that we've figured out how to do this, my question to you now is I'd like you to extend this. So the way I'd like you to extend this is, um, oh, actually, before I ask you to extend it, I did want to mention uh, a solution that a student came up with, and which I think is also uh, 
worthy of discussion. And that is, instead of actually um, doing this type of mathematics, where you're adding them and floor divisioning by the square size and then modding by two, they ended up simply doing something like this. Okay, so here's a solution that a student came up with. It's actually simpler because it doesn't have any mathematics really behind it other than flipping a value, which is essentially what we're doing with the color. And the other uh, kind of cool thing is that they're, they're, they ended up creating a Boolean variable, and we just let's just call it C. And then here, notice there's no math. All they're doing is they're just changing C into an integer. So false turns into zero, and then, uh, and that's white, and then all they do is, t in order to change it to black, they say, you know, if, if you have a Boolean, you can just say not. And if you say not false, it becomes true. And of course, up here, if you change true into an integer, it turns into a one. And so that's kind of cool. And so if we run this, look what happens. Voila, it works. But there's a slight issue with it, which we discovered. And that is that, so right now you got to think of how are we drawing the, the order of the, um, the squares. So if you think about it, watch what happens when I change to uh, an even number. Now, if you think about even numbers, right? Uh, oops, look, look what's going to happen if I change this to a 600 instead of a 500. You would expect it to be 6 by 6, right? So watch. Uh-oh. Uh so that's not what we're looking for. But now, this is very telltale because notice these are all white. So that means that we're not actually, we are flipping them. So that means we're not drawing them in this order. We're drawing them in this order. So if I was to show you that uh, over here uh, in, in, in the paint program, so we're actually drawing them like this. Okay? So we're going, you know, white, black, white, black. And Notice, if this is white, black, white, black, let's just take four, for example, because four is even. Then what comes after black? Then it's going to be white again. And notice these two guys now are white, white. And that's exactly what we have, white, white. And so this isn't going to work for even numbers, but it is going to work for odd numbers. So if we, if we change the program and, you know, um, we changed it. Remember, we had initially we had 500. It worked fine for that. However, um, I want it to actually uh, draw them going, instead of drawing them going down and up, I, I want them to draw this way, like that. And so in order to change that, I can change my code and I can go like this. And I can come up here to my X and Y and I can change this to Y and I can change this to X. And if I run this, it's not going to fix the problem, but look what's going to happen. You see. Now we are drawing right to le you know, going down this way, going horizontally down uh, in this manner. This, so this is, this is how we're drawing now, right? That's good. But um, the problem is it's still an even number, so we're getting back to the same color again. And so essentially, um, I think... I'm going to end up uh, sticking with my original. And also, you're going to notice that my original solution with uh, line 27 actually has a benefit because uh, 
of the next assignment I'm going to give you. So uh, let me show you that. But in any case, this was kind of cool to see. I don't think I've ever actually uh, changed a Boolean to an integer before. That's really cool. Okay, so here's my, my program. And so the next kind of assignment, mini assignment I'm going to give you is, if you take your mouse now and click inside these squares, watch what's going to happen. I'm going to click in there, and you notice right here it says white. And notice if I come over here and click, it says black. And notice that it, I don't have to click in the middle. I can click in any little, see, notice right there? I can click in any corner, and it always knows. And also, remember, it's the tip of the mouse, right? It's not the tail of the mouse. So it knows, so watch this. It knows that I'm in the white region. It knows I'm in the white region. So now in order to accomplish this, I can give you a, a, a hint on how to, to accomplish this. You're going to have to override the handle method. So let's go back to um, my previous example, right? So this one was we're overriding the draw method. But if we scroll down here, we're overriding the handle method. Now this is for a completely different, this was for the line drawing one, but nonetheless, I want you to see if you can now take this code and modify it such that it would work with my example here where I'm clicking in any square. And by the way, this is going to work for not just a 2x2, two two. it should work for a 4x4 four four or, or however, however many. But let's just keep the square sizes to 100 pixels by 100 pixels and see if you can figure out how to complete this assignment where the program knows what color square you're clicking on. Good luck. Yeah, good question. Somebody came up with a question. Uh, I want it to specify the number or specify, sorry, the color when you release the mouse, not when you press the mouse. So when you release the mouse, it should then say black or white, okay? And again, for this, you're gonna have to do a little bit of mathematics, okay? So, so drawing a picture is probably a good thing here. Okay, so here is a picture of just the simplest two by two grid. Let's see if we can figure out how we're going to know where the mouse is. Now obviously we can use uh, if event equals FL release to uh, get the mouse release event and we can also get the position of that and let's go take a look at the documentation before we come back here because um, we need to see that first. So under uh, FL here under the class if we go now to uh, FL, uh, I have to scroll down this way here, and we'll go to FL event X and Y. So right there. So if you notice, FL event X returns the mouse position of the event relative to the window and Y. So essentially, we're just going to capture uh, or you know see if the event that occurred, if the release was located wherever it was located X and Y. So now let's go back to the drawing and essentially the X values between here and here are going to be you know 0 to 100 and then from here to there it's going to be 200. Now I want you to think of these X and Y's if we could somehow make them simpler, and perhaps let's think of this as 0, 0, and let's think of the next one as 1, 0, and then this one would be uh, 0, 1, and this one would be 1, 1. So what I'm doing here is essentially I'm kind of changing the coordinate system 
just to one instead of hundreds. So that should be pretty easy, right? So how would you change, let's say, a number like 143, which would be in this region here, right, into a one? So the easy way to do this, right, and also, obviously, how would you change a number like um, 68 into a number like, so in between here, how would you change it to a zero? So an easy way to do this, right, is simply to floor division it with 100. So 68 floor division 100 is going to give you zero. 143 floor division 100 is going to give you 1. So essentially, if you floor division by 100, you're going to get these values. Now, what can we do with those values? Well, um, we need to add them. And so 0 plus 0 is 0. 1 plus 0 is going to be 1. 1 plus 0 plus 1 is going to be 1. And 1 plus 1 is going to be 2. So now, you notice we can use this number here as the index for our color. So it doesn't matter where you click in the, right? Because, like, I mean, let's just take, for example, even if you click something like here, which is almost 200, 200. So let's say you, you clicked on 180, comma 180. Then if you floor division this by 100, uh, you're still going to get 1. And you floor division that by 100, you're still going to get 1. And you add them up, you're still going to get 2. And so now, obviously, that's not enough. Because obviously, like if you had a bigger grid, right, if you had like a lot, then you need you need more. But now all you got to do is mod that by 2. And so, you know, if you get 0, 1, 2, you mod those by 2 again, and you're going to get the correct value all the time. That's going to be 0, that's going to be 1, and that's going to be 0 again. So we're going to go white, black, white, black. And so that's the mathematical solution that I came up with. Now, that's not to say that's the only way to do it, but uh, it is one way. So go ahead, pause the video, and see if you can get the solution. OK, we're back. So here is the solution. Let's take a look at it. So here is my handle method, which is essentially all that you had to complete in this situation. Um, remember, what you have to do first, right, is you have to uh, call the handle method of the base class, or super. And then if the event uh, is equal to, so the event that is passed here to the handle method, if it's equal to FL release, which is the mouse button being let go, then get the X and Y coordinate of the where the event occurred. Then take the X position and floor division it by 100 and add it to the Y position floor division by 100 and then mod it by 2 and if the answer is odd then it's black and if it's not odd then it's white then we say return 1 because we have handled the event and listen if we did not handle the event then we need to return R which is whatever the base class returned so the base class might handle the event and we don't know if that's going to be a 1 or not so we'll return R in that case okay and so if we run this now, um, we'll get something that looks like this. And if we click, OK, that's white, that's black, white, black, white, and so on. And so it works quite well. 
And if we wanted to clean up the code just a slight amount, so we can go back and notice that I still have the uh, 100 hard-coded here. Perhaps it would be better if we fix that. So I would fix that simply by coming here and replacing self.square size by 100. And then I would come here and I would uh, fix this by putting self.square uh, size. And same thing here. Like that. And now let's try it. And now it works. Okay. And we're going to get the right colors where we click. Okay. Um, and the nice thing here, of course, is we could end up just, you know, changing this and, um, you know, running it again, and it's still going to work properly. If I show you here, that's black, white, white, black, black. So it, it's it's okay. Um, so that's about that's about all I wanted to do for today, and uh, is a good example of something that we might do in the future. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. See you next time.